Today we're going to be taking a look at the Red Dragon M916 Icer King Pro. This is a budget gaming mouse that offers potentially top tier performance at a ridiculously low price. I'd recently come across this mouse on TikTok and heard a lot of potentially great factors about it. For just $36.99 you can get a wireless dual mode, Bluetooth and 2.5GHz mouse, with USB-C charging and a lighter weight than the Jeeper X Superlite. I quickly ordered one and within about a week it showed up at my door. Firstly, what's in the box? Well, the box itself is incredibly cheap. This is fine as I'd rather the money go into the mouse itself and less on the packaging. As long as it arrives in one piece it really doesn't bother me. Alongside the mouse itself we get a USB-C power corded cable, a USB-C to A adapter, and then the wireless receiver. This is the typical setup for modern wireless gaming mice, allowing you to keep your receiver close to your mouse pad, and also keeping your charging cable within arm's reach. We also get an incredibly interesting sticker sheet, to say the least. I'm not entirely sure who or what would use these, but if you're a fan of stickers, you do get some. So starting with the design, this is an anime design, and honestly quite a nice one at that. I do really appreciate the white and red, as I think it's a great color combination. I did get out all of my red mouse pads, and really did love how this looked on some of them. Red Dragon do offer the same mouse in flat colours, but I feel like most people would buy this specific one just for its design. However, I will be coming back to the design as I do have a couple of discrepancies, but on a desk I don't think many people would complain. For the shape, we get a flared ambidextrous shape, allowing for comfortable palm, claw and fingertip grips. I personally didn't have any issues with the shape and didn't feel like it forced me to hold it in any particular kind of way. And as somebody with quite large hands who often gets finger cramps if a mouse is even slightly unergonomic, I did not have any issues with this mouse, which means it definitely gets my green light. Weight wise, it's extremely light. You definitely do appreciate the lightweighted nature of this mouse. And as stated prior, you are getting a mouse considerably lighter than one of the most popular mice out right now, which usually sells for around 130 to 150 pounds. As for buttons, the mouse uses Huano blue dots, and the switch has felt very responsive and tactile. Although due to the size of the left and right click, they can feel a bit on the lighter side, especially compared to the same switches in mice with smaller buttons. The side buttons are only on the left and feature two different textures, one rough and one smooth. I genuinely really like this. As for the scroll wheel, it's extremely light and has very little definition to the steps. This was my biggest issue with the mouse from purely a cosmetic perspective. You really can't feel the individual steps of the scroll wheel. And as someone who uses scroll wheel to jump in all games, I really do rely on a good, well-defined scroll wheel. I didn't actually have that many issues in-game with it, however I would say that it feels extremely jarring to turn a scroll wheel and get next to no physical feedback. As for the mouse feet, the feet are shaped well and I have no issues with them. They are PTFE and glide properly on all of the mouse pads I tried it on. However, Red Dragon do not sell replacement feet for this mouse which means that once worn out, you will need to switch to universal options. This is something I personally really hate in mice. Companies will already have a whole factory and manufacturing process for specific mouse feet just for their mice, so I don't see why they don't just produce twice the amount of feet and sell the extra on their site as replacements. As for the sensor, this uses the Pixart 3395, which performs totally fine in games. The software allows for some fine tuning, such as the LOD as well as a high performance mode, However, using this didn't really seem to actually do anything, so I'm not entirely sure what this is supposed to do. Regardless, the mouse tracked fine on both cloth and glass pads. Whilst on the topic of software, the software was not easy to find. I had to find the software for the non-anime version, which uses an entirely different model number. After downloading, Windows Smart Screen flagged it as potentially dangerous. I still went through and installed it, however I would not blame you if you did not. Once installed it was fine though. We have options to rebind the mouse button, set the debounce time of the clicks from 0 milliseconds to 20 milliseconds, and you can have up to 5 DPI stages ranging from 50 to 26,000 DPI. There are also some generic options such as angle snapping, polling rate and things like that. However I will mention, not just for this mouse but for all cheaper mice like this, Always turn off all of these options, they will just make your mouse less consistent in use. So moving on to actual games, I use this in Apex, Valorant and Aim Labs, 
and really enjoyed using it. I definitely felt as though I had an easier time in Valorant, as combined with a lower sense, I feel that a lighter mouse can often make you feel as though you can play a tech FPS game much faster than with a heavier one. Although tracking scenarios in Aimlab, as well as gameplay within Apex was still great. I just don't feel I had a considerable advantage over even one of my wired mice. I think the shape is really a strong aspect alongside the weight and sensor, and I will definitely say that it performs way above its price bracket. I was not the biggest fan of the coating, as it is extremely soft touch matte plastic. And if you've used something like this, you would know that it's extremely very low durability material. I do not have sweaty hands, but I feel like if you did, you would notice the wear a lot quicker than someone like me. I do think that a straight gloss or matte would have been much better for this mouse, However, I do also feel that it's likely due to the fact it has an anime graphic printed on it. Whilst on this topic, the graphic itself is squished. I'm not sure if it's just my copy, but even comparing with the box, you can see that the anime girl looks totally fine, and then on the mouse itself, the graphic is very clearly squeezed ever so slightly. This is such a shame as I feel that if cropped correctly, keeping the intended aspect ratio, it would look far more premium than it actually is. But this oversight is something that really reveals the cheapness of this product. Of course this does not affect performance, which was completely up to par, if not exceeding what I had expected, but I can't help but mention this as many people are buying it for its design alone. And this brings us back to the price. $36.99 is just 25% of the cost of a GPRX Super Lite 2. And comparatively, I would say it offers much more than 25% of the performance. The lacking issues of this mouse are the design's print quality, potentially the coating, and the software, as well as this mouse featuring a max polling rate of 1kHz. But this mouse is 14 grams lighter than the Jupro X, which alone makes it feel competitive. Although I don't think that this mouse will be competing with that though. As in, I don't see somebody with 150 pounds saved up, ready to buy a Jupro X, cancelling their order to buy this mouse instead. This mouse is still a budget option, however it really does show how inflated these product prices are. Mice and peripherals in general are increasing in cost at drastic rates, and sometimes it's easy to forget that the actual cost of materials to make these products is insanely low. So if you're looking for a sub £40 mouse with an anime design and top tier performance, I really can't not recommend this mouse. And whilst alone I do not feel that it will remain my main, this mouse does have a lot of hype going into it, and already sold out within about a week of being up. It just shows that a good price and a decent product is really all anyone cares about. And overall I hope that this mouse and others like it can remind people, as well as companies, that mice do not need to cost £150 to be good. Do let me know if you intend on getting one yourself, I really hope that you found this review useful and enjoyed it, and if there's anything you'd like to know or anything you'd like to recommend, please leave a comment or consider joining my discord. The link to that will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching, goodbye.